did not uh, put any uh, undue influence or pressure. It is extremely important to highlight that it is only um, it is only the RCMP, it is only police uh, that determine what and when to release information. We've heard it before from Justin Trudeau. Someone just experienced it differently or that story and those allegations are false. Well, this time around, it's perhaps even more serious. There is a suggestion that there was political interference from the Liberals with the RCMP. Hello, I'm Adrian Batra. With me are Brian Lilly and Jamil Giovanni. Okay, I just gave it just a quick sort of overlay there, Brian. Fill in the blanks for us. Why should Canadians be worried and concerned about this latest Liberal scandal? Because this isn't a case of interfering in a criminal prosecution of a nameless, faceless company like we saw with SNC-Lavalin. This is interfering in the investigation into Canada's largest mass shooting, largest mass murder, the Nova Scotia 2020 massacre that we saw. And in this case, we've got handwritten notes from a, an RCMP superintendent detailing how he was pressured by RCMP Commissioner Brenda Lucky, who said she had promised that certain information investigators didn't want out there would be released to help the government's gun control legislation that was about to come forward. This is meddling in a police investigation to help your political agenda. That is not how we operate in Canada, and no one should be accepting of that. I don't care how much you support Justin Trudeau. You'd be screaming if it was Doug Ford or Jason Kenney or Stephen Harper, and I would be too. You shouldn't be accepting it from Justin Trudeau. Jamil, there are certain institutions in our country where Canadians need to have unequivocal faith. We can't have our confidence rocked or shattered within some of these institutions. One of them is in law with, within the law enforcement agency. And the RCMP, to say to be charitable, shall we say, has been beleaguered for the last, say, decade or so, or even perhaps even longer with scandals have plagued the, the, the institution. Brenda Lucky, as the, the chief of the, the Canadians RCMP, Canada's RCMP right now, our confidence is shaken. It's rocked. Yes, I still uh, very much have, support, have uh, confidence in, in Commissioner Lucky. Yet we have a prime minister who sort of tacitly supports, yeah, we still have confidence in her. How do you see this? Well, I think a lot of Canadians over the last several years have gotten to a point where we we, are, we think that there's a certain kind of cold-hearted, cynical nature to politics. We've seen governments and politicians be very eager to exercise power over us, especially in the last two years. And this is an example of exactly that fear coming to life, where you have a politician or a series of politicians who observe 22 people getting murdered. And their first reaction was not like a normal person to grieve and feel sorrow, but instead to figure out how they can manipulate a tragedy for their own political gain. That is disturbing. Like, whatever you feel about gun control, and I know the Trudeau liberals are going to want to make that the focus mm -hmm. so that the Canadian people are fighting over policies. But the real issue, as you described, Adrian, is this desire to manipulate tragedy to exercise power and to be so cynical and cold hearted that in a time where grieving should be a natural response, they were immediately thinking, how do we put pressure on police officers so that we can get the legislation we desire passed? That is, that is creepy stuff. And it's, mm -hmm. and it's, no, re it's no surprise that people tried to hide this. The CBC report that came out earlier today, that the notes from this RCMP officer were not being shared with the investigation committee because they knew this stuff was damning and you know thankfully it's out so people can see what exactly mm -hmm. went on with our prime minister and his former public safety minister bill blair and of course as is always the case when these types of scandals and let's be very clear this is one of the biggest ones yet because it involves our top law enforcement agency brian um, they're trying to besmirch the very officer who came forward with these notes. Uh, the former Toronto police chief, uh, who frankly should know better, uh, is now our public safety minister, Bill Blair. He is out, you know, 
just besmirching the reputation of the superintendent who put forward these notes. Um, oh, well, well, you know, it, Darren Campbell came to his own conclusion. <laughs> Sorry, that's my best Bill Blair impersonation. But yeah, <laughs> Bill Blair saying this guy came to his own conclusions. No, he was in the meeting. Bill Blair wasn't. And RCMP Commissioner Brenda Lucky said, I promised the Prime Minister and the Minister Blair's office back when he was public safety minister that we would do this because their gun control legislation's coming. And all Trudeau can say about it is, you know, Blair said there was no uh, pressure or influence. But Trudeau, Adrian, he said there was no undue, no undue influence or pressure. Oh, so uh, there was pressure. There was influence exerted, but it was the right amount. You know where we heard that language before? With SNC-Lavalin, when he first denied it, said the allegations were false. Then he said, um, well, it, you know, it was, sure, it happened, but it wasn't bad. Then it became, he talked about why he did it, which was jobs. And so Jamil's right. He's going to make this all about gun control and say, well, we did this, but it was for your own benefit. No, there can't ever be a reason that politicians are mucking around in police investigations like this. If we want to give up on democracy, be a banana republic, let's do that. But don't pretend that you know we're something else. Well, uh, you know, it's an interesting comment you make about giving up on democracy, because that's basically what the NDP leader, Jagmeet Singh, has done to Canadians. Jamil, he has just said, well, it doesn't matter how bad or how egregious or how Ill, uh, you know, it, potentially illegal or lying, this government will be, we're going to still prop them up. And you just, ha you have a piece right now on torontosun.com that talks about that very issue. You know, Jigmeet Singh, anything he says on this is, um, and he has spoken about it. He has provided some, some criticism towards the liberals about this, this issue uh, that they shouldn't interfere. It doesn't matter. Does it, it doesn't matter what he says. Because it's not like he's going to do anything about it. Yeah, he'll he'll turn to Twitter uh, and and have some tough talk like he always does. Jagmeet Singh seems more fitting to be a Twitter activist than a political party leader in our country. He's proven that he is a follower. I call him in the uh, piece in the Toronto Sun a hype man, like uh, the uh, hype men of of hip hop lore, like Flava Flav <laughs> and Memphis Bleak and Tony Ayo. Like he's. He's a guy who's there to make the real stars look good. And so he might mm. say some things to come across like he's fighting the man and rebelling against the system on Twitter. But when push comes to shove and he has a chance to actually use his power, he always comes out on, on the side of Justin Trudeau. And we saw that this week with the internet censorship issue, where despite the fact that he's a self-described TikTok star, that he decided to betray his young supporters and introduce legislation uh, or support legislation, I should say, that will deny some young people the ability to earn a living online, will threaten their free speech. And how he'll handle this issue will be the exact same. We mm -hmm. cannot rely on the NDP to actually hold the Liberals accountable. They've given up on that. Boy, there used to be a time when the NDP was... You know, there for there for the working family, work for the working folk, but not anymore. Okay, Brian, just last question to you. This whole issue really, I mean, I, I can't emphasize enough just how serious it is to have our Canadians have faith in, in the institution of the RCMP. Uh, law and order, criminal investigations. I mean, this is this is where it lands at, at the top highest level. What happens next is since this has now become a he said, he said, she said, is there going to be a potential for there to be open air public questioning of the players involved here? Is that even possible? Is that something that Canadians could see happen? Well, we're going to see the Commons uh, call witnesses, including Commissioner Lucky and uh, in including Bill Blair. We'll see if people from the prime minister's office bother to show up if they're requested. Uh, but, you know, we saw this uh, even in a minority parliament with uh, with SNC-Lavalin. They found a way to uh, uh, to use their their power to shut down uh, We Charity, to shut down SNC. They'll shut this down again. They'll they'll yank the chain on the NDP and tell them, hey, get in line. Why? Are, you know, if it gets too hot with this committee looking into how political they became 
you know, as Jamil was saying, instead of grieving, instead of having normal human emotional responses, if we start seeing how craven they were politically in the wake of this massacre and tragedy, they'll yank the chain on the NDP, tell them to get in line, and the committee will be shut down. Uh, the public inquiry that revealed all this will continue. We may find out more, but their job is to look into how the shooting happened, not the politics of it. So that's why we need this to happen up on Parliament Hill. I'm just not confident that uh, we'll get to the bottom of it before Trudeau tries to bury it all. And his true and on supporters uh, will just wave the flag for him and say he's doing a great job. Doesn't he look good with those socks? Jamil, last word. I think Brian's exactly right. I mean, it's unfortunate we're arrived to this position where there's clear evidence that our prime minister, his cabinet, have exercised their power in an unjust and undue manner. And yet we don't have confidence that our system is going to hold these guys accountable. That is the opposite of what a democracy should be. When you see these news reports and you say something's wrong here, you should have confidence that the democratic process will find the truth and uphold what is right. We don't have that confidence. And I think that speaks to what Justin Trudeau has done to this country. And it's just that very thing that Canadians need in their institutions is confidence. We don't have it. Log on to Facebook and Twitter. Let us know what you think. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.